Hi there, welcome to Tersen. This tutorial is a series of videos where we look closely at cytometry and show how Tersen can be used to apply the latest statistical techniques to the high dimensional data which flow cytometry generates. In this first video, we'll give an introduction to cytometry and explain the terminology that we'll use to describe the following processes. Cytometry is a powerful technique that is behind some major finds in the immunology world. Cells are fixated with antibodies, which are conjugated with fluorochromes. They're suspended in a carrier fluid and pass under a laser in an instrument that has detectors to measure how the light is scattered or reflected. The shape and density of the cells are measured by one detector and another detector picks up the excitations of the fluorochromes to see the marker antibodies that are fixated to that cell's surface. The signal processor converts the information into channels and these channels are usually displayed in a biaxial plot. Each cell has a set of markers and cells which belong to a population group will have similar markers. Finding these populations is usually the objective of a cytometry experiment. CYTOF is an alternative method with improved detection because metal isotopes are used to conjugate the antibodies instead of fluorochromes. Fluorochromes scatter laser light in wavelengths that can overlap with each other and make them hard for the signal processor to differentiate. Metal isotopes give a sharper wavelength so there's less noise in the signal channels. Because they don't overlap so much, more channels can be detected using CYTOF, up to 50 in most cases. Traditional flow cytometry normally detects up to 28 channels, but there have been improvements to the method, called spectral cytometry, which has increased that to 40. The main challenge for cytometry is that results are normally analysed by manual biaxial gating, a labour-intensive process. Since modern instruments can now present 50 channels of data per cell, this becomes virtually impossible to chart manually and it forces researchers to make subjective decisions about which data to leave out of their analysis. To meet the challenge, statisticians have developed mathematical techniques that can be applied reliably to this level of data. Tersen is designed to transport these data analysis techniques from their original home in the computer programming world to the life sciences world where they can help pioneer new approaches. The first part to understanding how these new statistical techniques can be applied to flow cytometry is to clarify the terminology being used. This table lays out what flow cytometry researchers normally call their data analysis concepts and how they can be described by other disciplines. Often people use these words interchangeably and it can get very confusing. As well as the terms in the table, it's important to note a few other general concepts. In cytometry, a channel is a dimension. Having 50 channels to analyze is what makes flow cytometry a high dimensional discipline. A dimension is referred to as a variable in the stats world. And this is where we get the terms bivariate and multivariate. Bivariate is a simple 2D plot and multivariate is another word to refer to high dimensions. Another term to watch out for is component. After statistical techniques called dimension reduction are applied, the refactored dimensions are called components. Populations can be referred to as labels by programmers, but it's important to know that they don't mean that in the wet lab context. Controlling variation improves the experiment and cuts down on the amount of analysis work when the measurements are generated. So it's worth spending time on experimental design at the start. Batch effects caused by reagents or machine settings on a particular day can change the measurement effects. And this will affect how population clusters are seen in the data by algorithms. Instrument maintenance and biological controls should be employed to reduce variation. Observing the generated measurements often shows these variances and it can necessitate some data cleaning. There may be a requirement for pre-transformation of your data before upload, such as downsampling or normalization to remove batch effects. Lastly, it's worth planning how you will do quality control and cluster identification. Later in this tutorial, we'll explore how this can be done with Tersen. Thanks for watching.